Nightmare monsters start attacking on them. Leon asks Ma Fei to draw its aggro. Ma Fei begins attacking the nightmare monster, using his defense breaking strike. Confused after seeing his damage, Ma Fei wonders how Leon dealt 508 damage with just one hit. He expresses disbelief, stating that as long as he is dealing damage, even if it tickles, he'll tickle the nightmare to death. Ma Fei continues his relentless attacks on the nightmare. The nightmare monster starts talking and tells Ma Fei that if he wishes to be the first to die, the king will fulfill his wish. Unfazed, Ma Fei challenges the nightmare king, saying he has a three-foot sword and has accomplished amazing feats. Why should he fear death? So he asks Yang Xiangdi and Zhuo Yu to block the Nightmare King's attack. Both of them use their sand binding and shield of light to block the Nightmare King's attack. However, this is not enough to completely stop the Nightmare King's attack. It has been weakened by two levels, and Zhao Ziyu is healing him. He's barely able to hang on. Ma Fei shouts loudly, expressing that he can't hang on much longer. He asks Leon if he is ready because if he blocks the Nightmare King's attack anymore, he will die right here. After that, Leon attacks the Nightmare King with his full power, dealing 182 damage. After Leon's attack, a system warning blares, announcing that the Nightmare King's HP is dangerously low, and it's about to activate the Realm of Nightmares. Suddenly, everyone is surprised. Yang Xiang Dai informs them that the spell does AoE damage, and they can't block it. Leon realizes he can't let the Nightmare King have the chance, as he's confident Wo Gan, the Nightmare Village head and the others have been stuck here due to this attack. He prepares to counter the spell, determined to stop it. After this, the Nightmare King has only 128 HP remaining. Leon believes one more hit will complete the Nightmare Village quest, so he readies himself for a final blow. Jumping into the air to deliver the decisive strike, Zhao Ziyu warns Leon to be careful because she's run out of mana, so she can't heal Leon now. Leon replies, telling her he doesn't need healing, and attacks the Nightmare King with his full power. After that, a system notification pops up, congratulating the player Leon for killing Nightmare Village's boss for the first time and awarding 30 free stat points. It's detected that Leon defeated the Nightmare King boss with melee attacks, earning him an additional 10 free stat points and plus 50 EXP. Congratulations to the player Leon for leveling up in succession. Current EXP, 3070th. 10 free stat points have been awarded. The hidden mission Kill the Nightmare King has been completed. The system will distribute rewards according to the player's rating, currently evaluating completion rate and level. Everyone is really happy after defeating the Nightmare Village boss. Suddenly, a system notification pops up, saying, Evaluation complete. System starts distributing rewards for completing the mission. Player Zhao Ziyu has received a D-rank rating, and the D-rank talent Spring Breeze and Willow has been awarded. Player Zhuo Yu has received a C-rank rating, and she also gets the D-rank talent Spring Breeze and Willow. Player Yang Xiang Dai has received a C-rank rating, and the D-rank talent Ground Explosion Magic has been awarded. Player Ma Fei has received a C-rank rating, and the D-rank talent Separating the World with One Strike has been awarded. Lastly, Player Leon has received an A-rank rating, and the A-rank rewards EXP plus 50 and the B-rank Skill Book Withering Magic have been awarded. However, Leon can't use this talent for now because his spirit status is zero. But at least there's still the Nightmare King's soul. So he says to the Nightmare King to drop some good stuff for him. After that, Leon receives a Dragon Piercing Sword, which is a B rank. However, Leon isn't happy because he can't use a sword. He thinks about how unlucky he is and questions why the Nightmare King would drop a B rank sword for him. Ma Fei, on the other hand, is really excited to see a B rank sword. Leon throws the sword to Ma Fei, saying it's all his. Ma Fei is confused, wondering why Leon is giving him a B-rank sword like this. Leon explains that he is the only one using a sword, and since he can't use it, who else could he give it to besides Ma Fei? After that, Ma Fei asks Leon if he doesn't know the value of B-rank equipment. Many players might not even be able to buy one, no matter how much they spend. If Leon were to sell this, he could get a house in the capital. But Leon doesn't care and asks Ma Fei to go and have fun with it. He starts inspecting the Nightmare King's soul carefully, hoping to find another useful item. However, he doesn't get another item, leading him to think that this trash Nightmare King really only dropped one piece of equipment. After some time, he says, forget about it, and starts looking at his status panel. After carefully inspecting his status, he finds out that his strength has increased, but having only 70 HP is too little. If he gets touched, he will die. 
He also checks his talent, the maid's brave heart. When it is detected that the player Leon has killed an enemy using melee attacks, he will gain free stat points as a reward. The main effect is the player can raise other stat values to the same value as another stat value. However, this talent also has some restrictions. Before using the main effect, only one stat can be selected. Leon thinks the passive's restriction doesn't allow for other stats to be increased, so he'll just have to think of ways to keep himself alive. He has to stay steady and can't make waves. The system notifies everyone that the hidden mission has been completed. Players will be immediately transported back to the real world and are asked to get ready. In the next moment, everyone is transported to the academy. Everyone is really happy after seeing Leon. The class monitors Zuoyu, and the rest of them have returned too. Principal Zu, after hearing the news that Leon and everyone has returned, asks if they are okay. Because they've been gone for two days, we all thought Leon and everyone would never return. Principal Zhu asked what happened, and Leon, along with everyone, explained everything to Principal Zhu. After hearing everything, Principal Zhu said, That's what I said. They must have dropped into a hidden world. You're all really lucky. All the top universities will be fighting over you. After hearing their conversation, one of the girls in the same class as Leon exclaimed, Wow, our class managed to produce five geniuses that are wanted by the top universities all at once. Another one said, We'll be a bona fide class of geniuses in the future. He was really jealous, thinking about when he would be as amazing as Leon and the class monitor. In the same moment, Ma Fei was thinking that the next time they enter a world, he'll make Leon regret giving him the dragon-piercing sword. With such an opus piece of equipment to help, he'll definitely be able to beat Leon once they get to the level 11 early stage realm. Suddenly, a man comes towards Principal Zhu. He is in a hurry and comes to Principal Zhu, saying, There are people from Huiking University and Jingdu University. They are looking for Leon and his friends. After hearing this, Principal Zhu is thinking that he hasn't even reported this yet, that Leon and his friends have completed a hidden mission. He wonders if the elite universities have such up-to-date information. However, Principal Zhu is really happy, thinking, looks like I'll have a happy ending to my teaching career before I retire. Principal Zhu welcomes both of them. They are the ones from the top university, Teacher Peng and Teacher Pei. Teacher Peng, after seeing Leon and his friends, asks, these must be the five students that passed Nightmare Village, as well as the hidden mission. Extraordinary, he introduces himself to Leon and his friends, saying he is the teacher in charge of recruitment at Jingdu University, Peng Liangji. He mentions that their school desperately needs geniuses like them, the other world's cream of the crop. If they're willing, he'll send over acceptance letters tomorrow. After hearing this, another teacher asks Teacher Peng if he is really that shameless, fighting for people without even conducting a test. Teacher Peng replies that he is only showing that because in Jingdu University, they have nothing but sincerity. Since he doesn't trust these five students and insists on conducting a test, then start testing them and they'll see. After hearing this, another teacher starts saying that he'll introduce himself first. He says he is the teacher in charge of recruitment at Huiking University, Pei Zingual. He asks everyone not to worry, explaining that this so-called test is only to determine their role and ability to adapt to situations and to test if their various stats meet the criteria to enter the school. Leon is really nervous, thinking, determine our ability at our role. Then, wouldn't I, who can't use my skills, fail? But he must enter Jingdu University and follow the clues related to his parents. Teacher Pei asks everyone which one of them wants to be tested first. After hearing this, Ma Fei comes forward, saying, He, Ma Fei, a swordsman disciple with a B-rank talent in at level 5, will prove to Leon that he is stronger than him. Teacher Peng is thinking about Ma Fei, that he's already level 5 despite having only completed the beginner's training, and he even has a B-rank talent. Prodigies like him don't appear often. Ma Fei is good-looking and tall, making Teacher Peng think that he even looks like he's meant to be in Jingdu University. Teacher Pei is really impressed by Ma Fei's courage, so he activates his shield skill and asks Ma Fei to attack. After hearing this, Ma Fei prepares his attack and asks Teacher Pei to be careful, saying he will not show any mercy. He uses his world separating strike and attacks Teacher Pei. Teacher Pei gets really surprised after seeing Ma Fei break his defense. Although Teacher Pei is a gunman disciple and defense isn't his strong suit, he is still level 25. Teacher Pei is really happy after seeing this and congratulates Ma Fei. The world separating strike of Ma Fei is an extremely rare shield breaking technique. It can increase the attack power of the tip of his sword. Not bad at all. Ma Fei thanks Teacher Pei for the praise. Another teacher also gets impressed, saying not only that, even if Ma Fei's strength were concentrated in one area, 
His strength stat must be extremely high, 35 points at least. Judging by the speed of his attack, his agility is quite high too. After hearing this, Ma Fei's classmates get really shocked, thinking he has 35 attack at level 5. Is this what a swordsman disciple is like? As expected of a role said to have the most attack in the other world. Another one says if he drew the swordsman role like Ma Fei, his dead great-grandma would have lived in luxury. Teacher Pei, who is thinking that Teacher Peng must want to drag such a wonderful student back to Huaking University, asks Ma Fei if he has decided which university he would like to join. Teacher Pei ensures Ma Fei that the door of Huaking University will always be open for him. But Teacher Peng is not happy. He asks Ma Fei to join Jingdu University, promising to provide him with the best resources possible. Ma Fei replies, uh, how about the others get tested first? He would like some time to think because he wants to see which university Leon wants to go to. He will go wherever Leon goes, thinking he must outclass Leon in every way. Teacher Pei agrees with Ma Fei, saying they will continue the test and asks the next student to come forward. The next student steps forward and introduces herself, saying her name is Zhao Ziyu, and she is a healer. She uses her skill, like a fresh breeze, to heal her whole party. Teacher Pei gets really surprised, thinking she can heal the whole party despite only being level 4. Next is Zuo Yu. She uses her shield skill to block Teacher Pei's attack. Teacher Pei is impressed, thinking that she has such strong defensive ability despite only being level 4, and a part of the attack inflicted on her shield will be reflected. Teacher Pei asks Zuo Yu if this is her talent, and she says yes, explaining that this is her D-ranked talent. Damage reflecting armor spikes, which can reflect 20% of the damage she receives. Teacher Pei is really impressed with Zuo Yu's skill, stating that attacking her is like attacking himself, and to someone with the meat shield role, there's nothing more useful than this talent. After that, he asks the next student to come forward. The next student is Leon's best friend, Yang Zhang Dai. After seeing him, Teacher Pei asks if he also has the meat shield role too. Hearing this, Yang Zhang Dai replies that he is not a shield skill user, he is a mage. Teacher Pei gets really confused, thinking a 300 plus pound fatty is telling him he's a mage. He wonders if Zuo Yu or Yang Zhang Dai got mixed up. So Teacher Pei asks Yang Zhang Dai to show his skills. Yang Zhang Dai starts preparing his attack, but Teacher Pei is thinking, what's this kid playing at? I haven't felt a bit of magic at all. However, Yang Zhang Dai uses his ground explosion magic and attacks Teacher Pei. After seeing Yang Zhang Dai's magic, Teacher Pei gets really shocked, thinking Yang Zhang Dai's talent somehow can't be detected at all but just explodes from under his feet. Even he, a level 25 gunman, lost 3 HP without noticing. He considers what Yang Zhang Dai could do to people at the same level as him and thinks if this is really what a mere level 5 mage has done. So he decides to get someone to pay very close attention to this, perhaps Principal Zhu. After all, Principal Zhu has created five geniuses in his school already, and who knows if he's secretly overpowered. Lastly, Leon comes and introduces himself, saying his name is Leon, and he is a level 7 necromancer with a talent ranking unknown. After hearing that Leon is a level 7, Teacher Peng gets shocked, thinking he's a whole two levels higher than the other four. However, he is really confused because Leon doesn't reveal his talent. So he thought, could it be because his talent ranks too low, so he doesn't dare to say it. Teacher Pei says to Leon that they will carry out the test first and see what the results are. Leon agrees with them, but Teacher Pei is really curious, thinking, what kind of undead creatures can Leon summon? He can ignore being injured once by a new disciple, but if he, Pei Zinguo, were to be injured by one again, then he might as well go home. Leon gets ready and starts attacking Teacher Pei. But Teacher Pei is really confused, thinking, Leon is a necromancer, so why isn't he summoning the undead? What's he charging at him for? However, Teacher Pei thinks Leon has close range, explosive necromancy techniques. This student called Leon is too inexperienced, who would stand right in front of him in a battle. Suddenly, Teacher Pei gets really surprised after seeing Leon preparing his fist to attack him, thinking, how high can a mage's strength be? So he lets Leon hit him. But Leon doesn't hold back. He uses his full power and gives Teacher Pei 200 damage, sending him flying across to another corner. After seeing this, everyone gets really shocked, thinking, what's just happening? Leon knocked a level 25 teacher over in one hit. Teacher Peng asks Teacher Pei, what's happening? How could he be reduced to such a state by a level 7 necromancer? It's widely accepted that they're the physically weakest ones. Is Leon his relative? That's why he is going easy on him or something. Teacher Pei is really angry. He is also thinking about what just happened. 
he can't believe a level 7 newbie can deal him that much damage. He wonders what kind of monster this brat is, as he nearly gave him a heart attack with one punch. Is this the standard for a level 7 person? Leon's classmates are also really surprised. They can't believe their eyes that Leon sent the recruitment teacher flying with one punch. Another student asks if it's possible that the Leon they're seeing is an undead being that's been summoned and the real Leon is hiding somewhere. Another student agrees with him, explaining that it's widely accepted that the necromancer is the physically weakest role, so how could he send the recruitment teacher flying with one punch? Teacher Pang is really scared, thinking he got lucky teacher Pei Zinguo said he'd do the tests, or he'd be the one losing face. Leon asks the teacher if his test is over, but teacher Pei is really scared of Leon, thinking he is the most terrifying newcomer. Teacher Peng tells Leon that he has passed the test, but he hasn't demonstrated his undead magic, so they can't really give him a score. Leon replies, saying it's okay. He has thought it through and wants to major in physical fighting, like warriors, because it's not like he can use magic now anyway. Getting into Jingdu University is more important to him. Teacher Peng is really confused, explaining that specializing in a role other than his own is without precedent in the entire history of education. So he asks Leon to wait, he'll have to ask the principal about it. Teacher Peng calls the principal and explains that he has found a terrifyingly talented necromancer who wants to join the physical fighting major meant for warriors at Jingdu University. The principal is really confused and asks Teacher Peng to explain in detail. Teacher Peng says, Principal, I'll put it simply, he's only level 7, but he sent a teacher from Huaking flying with one punch. After hearing everything from Teacher Peng, Jingdu University principal is shocked. He says to Teacher Peng that he will give him the most authority in Jingdu University, no matter what conditions that student wants, agree to every single one of them. He must be convinced to join Jingdu University, so he asks Teacher Peng to start a video call. He'll invite Leon personally. He introduces himself to student Leon, saying he is the principal of Jingdu University, Jai Pingyang, and he hopes Leon will be willing to join them at Jingdu University, explaining that they have a long and glorious history. Excellent teachers, Leon interrupts and asks Principal Jai to save his breath, saying he'll be joining Jingdu University. After seeing that Leon is going to join Jingdu University, Teacher Pei gets really shocked, and he no longer requires Leon in his university. So he thinks he'll get the rest of Leon's friends, he'll fight for them. But before he says something, Principal Jai from Jingdu University asks Leon's friends, since they're all from the same class, why not join together? They can take care of each other too. Teacher Pei is really angry. He asks Principal Jai why he is taking them all. Isn't this a bit too much for Jingdu University? But Principal Jai ignores him and continues his conversation with Leon and his friends. On the other side, Teacher Peng is really happy. He is thinking that this will be the highlight of his admissions career. Leon interrupts them and asks Principal Jai if he has a few more questions for him. He asks Principal Jai if he knows his father, Ray. Principal Jai gets really shocked. He asks Leon if he is the son of Ray and Karen, explaining that no wonder he felt such a strong sense of familiarity the moment he saw Leon. After seeing that Principal Jai knows about his parents, so he asks Principal Jai if he knows where they are now. Principal Jai explains that they were both his students, but he hasn't seen them in over 10 years now. He can only tell Leon that his parents were very talented individuals. From then on, the two of them disappeared without a trace for over 10 years. He fears they've already died. He also says that he hasn't been able to get more information about them since they graduated. But he remembers that they would often talk about a private world and asks Leon to go to his private world. It contains something his parents have left for him. Principal Jai says to everyone that he'll send the acceptance letter to them directly once they've created it. But before that, they should try to pass the worlds related to their roles before school starts, so they'll be even more respected in school. He wishes everyone good luck and says he'll see them at Jingdu University. One week later, after passing the beginner's training, the fourth college separates its students into classes according to their roles in the other world. It's an intensive preparation class to try and get more students scouted by elite universities. In the fourth college mages class, Principal Zhu tells everyone that today, they'll enter a world specially designed for mages. This world is usually a test of their mental ability, involving logic or riddle-based challenges. If they work together, the sum of their thinking will be more than its parts. Principal Zhu provides the criteria for passing. 
Sometime later, Yang Xiangdi and Leon teleport into the mage's world. Leon asks Yang Xiangdi if he's sure they can do this. Yang Xiangdi responds, asking what could go wrong, emphasizing that theory means nothing compared to practice. He suggests that instead of carrying them all, Leon could carry him, and they can worry about the others later after they pass. Yang Xiangdi notices a girl standing in front of the gate and finds her really energetic. He informs Leon that they're going into the specialized mage's world. The girl welcomes both of them, and the system starts retrieving a world for two players. A moment later, a system notification pops up, stating that retrieving was successful. The specialized world these two players have drawn is the Cave of 10,000 Poisons. After seeing this, Leon asks Yang Xiangdi to let's go. However, Yang Xiangdi stops Leon, asking what he's doing and if he isn't going to listen to the mission instructions. Leon, confused, wonders about the instructions. Yang Xiangdi asks if Leon didn't listen to the instructions. How did he pass the Cave of Skeletons? After finding out how Leon cleared the Cave of Skeletons, Yang Xiangdi thinks Leon is an idiot. The elf girl then starts explaining the instructions. The legend tells of an ancient, evil tribe in Kyan Dongnan, Vicious and merciless, skilled in using poisonous worms to secretly poison people. A poisoned person grows deathly sick, and the worms reproduce in their body, eating their flesh until the host dies. Mission Objectives 1. Find the evil tribe of legend. 2. Destroy all the poisonous worms. Mission Rewards To be decided based on how the player completes the mission. The elf girl also reminds them that the cave of 10,000 poisons requires 5 players to start. The system will automatically match them with three other players, and they need to make the necessary preparations. After that, Leon and Yang Xiangdi enter the gate and match with three other random players to complete the mission. One of the random players asks Leon not to drag them down, but the blue-haired girl asks him to be more polite, as it's fate that they got matched together. She introduces herself as Fang Yuan, a fire mage, and introduces her little brother, Fang Zun, who is also a fire mage. The last one is Long Cheng. Leon and Yang Xiangdi introduce themselves and ask everyone to work together to pass. After the introductions, they head towards the stone door, but they can't open it. The blue-haired girl notices some words on the door and explains that the five words on this pillar should be instructions to open the door. But Long Cheng says, who cares about some instructions, and declares that he'll break it down. He uses his magic skill and attacks the door, but the attack has no effect on the stone door. It seems like this door has immunity to magic, spells can't damage it. The blue-haired girl asks everyone to take a look at those words, morality and integrity provide peace. Leon, thinking about why this door is immune to magic, suddenly hears the blue-haired girl say she knows the answer. Before she can reveal it, Leon breaks the stone door with one punch. Blue-haired girl and Long Chang are shocked, wondering who one-shot it. Isn't this a specialized world for mages? A system notification pops up, saying, your answer is correct. The door has opened. Yang Xiangdi is also surprised and impressed by Leon. Leon explains that he just wanted to see if they could push it open physically and didn't think it would be so weak. After opening this door, they see another door in front of them. This door is peculiar because the path is blocked by red flowers. Leon asks everyone to be careful of them as they look unnatural. However, it's already too late. Yang Xiangdi asks Leon to look at his hand. They've all been poisoned by the red flowers. Leon, staying calm, instructs everyone to keep moving forward as staying there is waiting for death. They have to get out of there quickly, or Leon's HP won't even last half an hour due to his low HP status. They start running towards the stone gate, but they have to solve the problem to open the gate, and they don't have time for this. Before they can think, Leon breaks the stone gate with his hands. With Leon's help, they safely make it out of the poison flower area. Blue-haired girl and her friends are shocked, thinking if this is really a riddle-solving world, why does it feel like they haven't needed to think at all? A system notification pops up, congratulating the player for completing mission 1, successfully find the evil tribe of legend, Cave of 10,000 Poisons. Blue-haired girl asks everyone if this is the Cave of 10,000 Poisons and wonders where they should go now. Suddenly, everyone notices a little girl with blue hair, and she introduces herself as Xiao Dong. She asks if everyone comes from the outside but notices that everyone is poisoned. Xiao Dong explains that it's poison from the Bayan flower and asks everyone to follow her back to the Cave of 10,000 Poisons to get treated. Leon is suspicious of the little girl 
Wondering when she appeared and how she mentioned the Cave of Ten Thousand Poisons, Blue-Haired Girl tells everyone that they don't know what to do now and suggests getting treated first. After some time, everyone reaches the Ten Thousand Poison Cave, and the little girl introduces her parents. Little girl's parents ask her who they are, and she explains that they're outsiders she met when picking medicinal plants in the mountains. They were poisoned by the Bayan flower, and she asks her parents to brew a pot of five poison soup for them. Little girl's mother invites everyone into the house, and after some time, they prepare the five poison soup. However, after seeing the soup, no one wants to eat it. Wang Chang suggests that Yang Xiangdi, with a more robust physique, should drink it first. Yang Xiangdi refuses, stating it's all fat, and suggests Long Chen go first. Leon, with little time left, decides to drink it quickly and get it over with. After tasting the soup, he comments that it's not too salty or bland and tastes great. The five poison soup really is useful, Leon's poison status has disappeared. So he asks everyone to drink up two and heal themselves because they don't know what dangers they'll face. After everyone drinks the five poison soup, Leon asks little girl Xiaodong if she could tell them about the history of the cave of ten thousand poisons. Little girl replies that she doesn't know the origins of the tribe either. All she knows is that their patriarch asked them to avoid the world and banned them from using their poison magic unnecessarily. Suddenly, little girl's mother interrupts their conversation. She tells Leon that the poison has been dealt with and everyone is safe now. She asks everyone to leave quickly because the inhabitants of the Cave of Ten Thousand Poisons aren't very welcoming to outsiders. However, the little girl is angry with her mother, asking why she would want to chase away visitors when they've just received them. So, the little girl asks Leon to relax, not to listen to her mom, and stay as long as they want. Leon replies, saying they'll stay if it's not too much trouble. They just got poisoned, so their bodies aren't in the best shape but he is really curious about little girl's parents' weird attitudes. After that, the little girl and her parents close the door and ask everyone to stay here and rest. They'll leave first. So, the little girl asks her parents to let's go, saying the full moon's tonight, and it's going to start soon.